So Charles, are we? We're streaming now. Okay. All right. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Um, my name is Sergio Lukic. I'm a <coughs> faculty member um, in the Electrical and Computer Engineering Department at uh, North Carolina State University and the Deputy Director of the uh, Freedom Center. Um, today I'll uh, um, talk to you about the Resilient Information Architecture Platform for the Smart Grid, which is an um, open source platform for microgrid control. I'll be presenting with uh, How To, who is a PhD student here at uh, North Carolina State University. So, very briefly, I'll introduce uh, Freedom. So, Freedom stands for Future Renewable Electric Energy Delivery and Management Systems uh, Center. This is um, a center that was uh, founded in 2008 as a um, engineering research center uh, funded by the National Science Foundation. And the vision of the center in 2008 was to create an energy internet that allows for renewable energy storage and usage to be added and controlled seamlessly uh, in the power system. So if we look at the traditional power system, the power system is, as it operates today, we have centralized generation very far away from the final or the, the load. Um, and the system as it is designed today is um, somewhat inefficient, uses um, uses um, um, fossil fuels typically uh, to, to power the system and has a number of issues in terms of um, uh, security concerns that um, uh, where the source can be cut off from the load if we have for example a natural disaster uh, and we have other resiliency challenges so um, by using distributed um, energy resources hopefully distributed renewable energy resources we can um, place the generation very close to the load and eventually of course our goal is to have uh, all the users become prosumers so we want the user uh, to both consume the electricity but also produce it uh, through the use of renewables for example uh, rooftop solar or uh, wind, um, uh, small wind um, uh, type systems. Um, the uh, big challenge um, for this concept of energy internet, right, where uh, similar to the internet, uh, we don't only consume information, we also produce information. If we do the same thing for energy, uh, a big challenge is how do we actually route uh, the energy? How do we uh, ensure that um, essentially the generation and the load uh, match at all times? And uh, through the Freedom ERC, we've worked on a number of technologies to uh, solve this problem. And one of the key technologies uh, is shown here, which is the distributed grid system controls. And that's what we'll be uh, talking about today. Um, so the idea is that these distributed resources uh, can uh, communicate with each other and make decisions in a distributed way at the edge of the power system. <clears throat> so the advantage of decentralizing the decision making, taking it from that uh, top-down design that we see in a traditional power system uh, is that we can uh, improve both physical and cyber reliability by removing a single point of failure on the system. We can make decisions more quickly, right? If I make the decision at the edge of the network, it doesn't have to go all the way up uh, stream to the um, to the um, uh, to the control center and then back down to the uh, end user so we can make decisions more quickly and importantly we can scale the system so we can have millions of these prosumers communicating with each other and making decisions distributed in a distributed way um, fairly easily um, which obviously becomes an issue if you have a bottleneck at a, at a central um, uh, entity that makes decisions. So uh, REAPS, the Resilient Information Architecture Platform, um, is not just a way for these nodes to communicate with each other. It's really uh, a platform that allows these distributed applications uh, to be uh, implemented and, and to run on the, on the edge of the network. 
and it really provides all these orth orthogonal features that you would need uh, to implement distributed applications. Some examples include application management, fault tolerance, uh, security, time synchronization, so on and so forth. How we'll talk in detail about uh, the um, specific features that are unique to the platform. Um, so a little bit of an overview of um, REAPS. Uh, this uh, project was initially funded by ARPA-E, which is um, a department within uh, the Department of Energy. Um, the platform itself was uh, built by Vanderbilt University, so the, the um, role of uh, North Carolina State University within this project was really to define what this platform should be doing to support distributed uh, grid applications and then also to develop applications specifically for microgrid control, which again, how we'll talk about in detail. Um, recently, uh, the project itself, REAPS, has become a part or has become one of the projects under the umbrella of LF Energy. LF Energy is a Linux Foundation um, uh, initiative specifically focused on um, platforms that deal with um, energy um, um, uh, with, with, um, um, with energy, essentially. Um, and a little bit more information about um, uh, the Linux Foundation. Essentially, the Linux Foundation uh, tries to come up with open source solutions that can be used uh, throughout an industry. Uh, so it brings together players that may be competitors in a certain market. Uh, and, and has them develop open source solutions through the open source community. Uh, they can then be shared by all of these um, companies um, as kind of the, the base uh, for some um, company specific uh, solutions that again build on these open source, um, 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 on this open source platform or open source base. Um, the, um, the Linux Foundation has been very successful in a number of different um, areas. Cloud computing, obviously, <coughs> is a huge one where um, some of the solutions from the Linux Foundation are, are kind of the, um, uh, the industry leader. Uh, and now they're, again, trying to get into the, the energy field as well. And one of the projects under the Linux Foundation is, is this uh, ReApps platform. Uh, so with that, I'll turn it over to Hao, who will give a little bit more detail on the platform and, and get into some of the applications that, uh, that we've developed. Thank you, Dr. Lukish, for the introduction. And uh, hi, everybody. My name is Hao Tu. Uh, next, I will give you an introduction to the ReApps platform and I'll talk about the important features of ReApps how it can be used for implement uh, smart grid control. I will also show you some example uh, applications we developed for microgrid control. So let's start. So what is uh, REAPS? REAPS is short for Resilient Information Architecture Platform for the Smart Grid. Uh, it aims at providing an operating system that enables the construction of distributed, distributed software apps that run the smart grid. ReApps for smart grid is like Android for smartphones. We know that we can uh, have all kinds of apps running on Android. So on ReApps, we also have all kinds of apps, but those apps are for smart grid control. And ReApps is an open source software platform, so you can actually go to our GitHub repository, download the, uh, download the platform for free, and you can use it for uh, either in-app research projects or to control smart grid in the field. So for a uh, ReApps user, for application developers, ReApps provides a design and tool suite for developing applications. It also provides uh, multiple runtime services to support distributed algorithms uh, with advanced functions. So if you look at the right side figure, it shows the overall platform architecture of platforms. At the bottom of the figure, there are multiple nodes. They are connected or they are interfaced to the smart grid devices to control those smart grid devices. At the top of the figure, there is another node. We call it a React control node. It can help you 
deploy the developed applications to those nodes. <coughs> All the nodes are connected by three functional buses. One is a deployment bus, one is a discovery bus, and one is communication bus. Next, I will introduce the uh, senior feature of React's platform and I'll talk about how it can help us uh, control Smart Grid. So, the first feature I will talk about is called Component Framework. A React component is actually the most basic building block for React applications. And once a React component is developed, it can be used for multiple applications or for multiple nodes in one application. This figure shows a general model of React's component. It has five ports. It has subscribe and publish ports. They are used for publish and subscribe communication. It has a re reply and a request port. They are used for a request and a reply communication. Subscribe and the reply ports have their callback functions and they will be triggered once a message is received. So event-driven operations can be implemented in the callback functions of those uh, two ports. There is also another port called timer port. Timer ports are programmed to fire periodically so that we can implement time-driven uh, operations in the callback functions of uh, timer ports. Uh, for example, if we want to do the uh, discrete integration with a fixed time state, with a fixed time step, then we can use uh, the callback functions of timer ports. So I, I know the term ports, uh, components may remind you of a piece of hardware, but in fact, uh, Reapp's component is implemented as a single thread component in a, a single thread program uh, in the Reapp's platform. And uh, uh, once we uh, developed uh, our application using the uh, Reapps components, then what we do is we package the Reapps components into an application. We then download this application to the Reapps nodes that will actually run those applications. For that, Reapps uh, offers a convenient service. We call it a deployment service. The deployment service uh, help the developer deploy the application from a single development machine to multiple nodes. Reapps uh, also provides a graphic user interface to access uh, the deployment service conveniently. For example, if you look at the figure here, it shows that Reapps deployment service GUI is deploying the application to five different nodes with different IPs here. So the next feature I want to mention is called device interface service. We know that uh, Reapps is used to control all kinds of devices in a smart grid. And we know that uh, smart grid devices, they, they, they usually use different communication protocols runs on different physical medium. And for, uh, for example, uh, for inverters, uh, it, it, it commonly supports uh, mode bus messages uh, defined by uh, IEEE 5047. And for phaser measurement unit, it may use a C37 phaser transfer protocol, right? So uh, Reapps uh, device interface service actually implements those commonly used uh, communication protocols as library components, so that the uh, application developers, they can use those components directly. Uh, this will save them a lot of time. The developers can focus on their algorithm, on their applications, instead of defining the interface between the Reapps platform and the uh, smart grid devices. So the next feature I want to mention is called uh, high precision time synchronization. And we know that uh, for some applications we may want to we may want to multiple nodes to act to take actions simultaneously. Uh, this can be achieved using the high precision time synchronization service. The functions of uh, time synchronization service um, has, uh, of Reapps has twofold. The first is to align the system clocks of all Reapps nodes to a common clock. And this common clock can come from GPS or uh, network time protocol. If the former two are not available, are not available, then the common clock can also be uh, uh, the system clock of a master node. 
So the second uh, function of the time synchronization service is to provide an easy to integrate and a renew, reliable time uh, synchronization service for external hardware, which means generating synchronized PALs at the selected GPIO pins to synchronize external hardware. So um, until now, I have introduced <coughs> some salient features of Reapps platform. But uh, because, of, uh, because today we only have limited time, I could not cover all of those features. But if you are interested, you are more than welcome to check our uh, recent paper published uh, in IEEE Transaction on Industry Electronics. So in the REAPS vision for the future microgrid, each important microgrid device is equipped with the REAPS node. And with a fully distributed controller, REAPS can deliver a scalable solution for any microgrid. And with the supported uh, services, REAPS can reduce the barrier to establish to establishing advanced microgrid control. So to verify the performance of the REAPS platform and uh, the developed uh, applications, we built a hardware in the loop test bed. We use OPPO RT simulator to simulate uh, the grid response the switching models for power electronics converter, they are implemented uh, in the FPGA simulator with a very small time step. And uh, other components like transformers, nine impedance, they are simulated in the uh, CPU simulator with a larger time step. And then we, uh, then we include the state-of-art microcontrollers from Texas Instrument to emulate the converter's local controllers this means we are using the microcontrollers from Texas Instrument to control the simulated inverters in a simulator. The combination of a simulated converter and a microcontroller emulates the actual uh, distributed generator in reality. And for each microcontroller we uh, equip it with a REAPS node. The hardware for REAPS node is uh, big open single singleball computers. And the communication between the uh, between the microcontroller and the big open single board computer is um, a Modbus protocol. Of course, this is achieved by the uh, device interface of Reaps platform. The communication among the Reaps nodes and the, uh, the the implementation of the algorithm uh, are also uh, realized by Reaps platform. So the example application we will show today uh, is microgrid sequence control with uh, unbalanced compensation. But before we, uh, but before we talk about the application, let's have a look at the um, voltage um, what is voltage unbalanced and how we can compensate voltage unbalanced using distributed generators. We know that uh, microgrids are commonly formed at distribution grid. And uh, in distribution grid, unbalanced loads can exist, which causes a negative, which cause a negative sequence voltage. And the degree of uh, voltage unbalance is measured by voltage unbalance factor, which is defined as the ratio between negative sequence voltage and positive sequence voltage. Here we show an example microgrid based on IEEE 34-bar system. We show the voltage at the a bus uh, at the bus 840. If you look at the voltage waveform here, you can see it's highly unbalanced because of the unbalanced load in the system. So, conventionally, what people do is that people use a distributed generator to compensate the voltage unbalance by injecting negative sequence current in face of the negative sequence voltage. If the instantaneous three-phase voltage can be measured here, then the negative sequence voltage can be calculated in any DQ reference frame rotating with negative nine frequency. This is shown uh, in this block diagram here. So uh, if we uh, have this method, then we can measure the three-phase instantaneous voltage, extract the negative uh, sequence component and inject the in, uh, negative sequence current in phase of that voltage. But there is uh, one issue here. That is the controller has to, ha the local controller, the digital distributed generator's local controller ha has to uh, 
ha has to have a direct connection to the compensated bus and uh, to measure the, uh, the instantaneous three-phase voltage. This, uh, 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 if the distributed generator is far away from the compensated bus, then the 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 matter the the, mass, the matter become costly and less reliable, and in some cases it even becomes impractical. Uh, if we want multiple DGs to share the compensation effort to compensate the voltage unbalance, then the system become more complicated since each DG each distributed generator has to run a separate connection from the uh, from its local controller to the compensated bus. This is uh, uh, just like what we show here. So what we propose is to use a uh, uh, global synchronized deco reference frame to solve this issue. So uh, let's assume for now we have a, a global uh, DQ frame available. We will talk about how to use React platform to create such a DQ frame later. So if we have a global DQ frame here, we can extract the, neg the D and Q component of the negative sequence voltage in a global DQ frame here. Then, because the D and Q component of the negative sequence voltage are DC quantities, then we can send it through no bandwidth communication, like LAN or wireless communication, to the DG's local controllers. And in the DG's local controller, we can use the same global DQ frame to reverse transfer this uh, to reverse transform this uh, D and Q component of the negative sequence voltage back to ABC domain and use it for a negative cur sequence current injection. In this way, we can avoid transmitting the instantaneous three-phase voltage from a remote bus to the DG's local controller. So now our question becomes, how can I create such a DQ, global DQ frame, right? So this global DQ frame, this global DQ frame is actually created uh, with the help of Ray App's high precision synchronization pulse. So in each DG's local controller, we we two two interrupt service routines are necessary. One for phase increment and one for frequency correction. So in each PWM interrupt, we will. In each PWM interrupt, we will increase the estimated global phase by the product between uh, the product of the estimated global frequency and the switching period. And when the time synchronization pulse comes, then the local controller will enter the synchronization interrupt and the sample the global the estimated global phase at that moment. And this estimated global phase is then compared with the reference global phase. And if the, dif the, the difference between those two values are positive, which means the sampled global frequency is lagging the reference global uh, phase, then uh, a P controller is used to increase the estimated global frequency a little bit. In this way, when the next synchronization pulse comes, the phase difference will be smaller, and those two phases will uh, eventually become the same. This figure sh here shows uh, how uh, the two different reference frames are synchronized to a global DQ frame gradually here. So, uh, Right now, uh, until now, I have talked about how can we create a global, uh, a, a global DQ frame and how we can use this DQ frame to inject the negative sequence current to compensate the uh, voltage unbalanced. Next, I will uh, introduce you the secondary control, which will be used to restore the microgrid frequency voltage and the voltage unbalance factor, and also share the load and the compensate, compensated uh, uh, effort equally. If you look at the first equation, then this is the secondary control to regulate the microgrid frequency, this part, and to share the active power among labor, uh, the uh, labors. And the second equation is used to reg regulate the 
microgrid voltage and share the reactive power equally among the uh, distributed generators. And the last equation is used to regulate the voltage unbalance factor and share the compensation effort equally among the uh, distributed generators. If you look at the form of those equations, you can see all of them are based on a consensus algorithm. So we only need a sparse communication network for this proposed uh, secondary control algorithm to work. So with this uh, secondary control algorithm in place, we can have a look at the overall control diagram of our uh, distributed generator. Here, at the primary level, we have the current loop, voltage loop, and uh, the negative uh, current injection control and droop control. They are implemented in the DG's local controller. In our case, it's the microcontroller from Texas Instrument. Mm. <clears throat> the reaps uh, nodes implement the second proposed synchronous control and send the synchronization paths here to the local controller to create the global DQ frame. So this is the overall control diagram for a single DG. And we, uh, the system we are used to test uh, the proposed algorithm is uh, a microgrid based on actual 34 bus system but uh, we made several modifications to the original systems. The first modification we made uh, is we add uh, four digits uh, at bus 840, 822 here, 890, and 844. And uh, second, we replace all the single phase loads with uh, three phase balance nodes with a floating neutral in order to avoid the zero sequence component. And uh, the last modification we made is uh, for remote bus 840 here, we expect it to have a critical node, so we want to regulate its uh, voltage unbalance factor. So, for, so this is the test results. And at T1, the microgrid is connected to the main green, and we uh, dispatch a power command for the first distributed generator. You can see the power output P and Q of the first distributed generator change. And then at T2, the microgrid is islanded from the main grid. And because of uh, droop control, there is a frequency deviation here and the voltage deviation from their nominal values. At T3, we enable the frequency and voltage secondary control. In about 10 seconds, the secondary control restores the frequency and voltage to their nominal values. At T4, we enabled the unbalanced secondary control. In about 20 seconds, the voltage unbalance factor measured at the critical bus, uh, which is 840, is, re uh, is regulated to less than 4%. So in steady states, after we enable the secondary control, if you look at here, the active power, reactive power, and the compensation effort are shared equally by all uh, distributed generators. So this, act this application actually shows how we can use Reapps platform to manage microgrid with some of its advanced features such as time synchronization. So besides this application, we also uh, developed some other applications for microgrid control. For example, uh, in this first paper, we uh, use reapps to implement a distributed control strategy to, uh, uh, to achieve microgrid resynchronization. In the second paper, we talk about uh, this, we talk about the secondary control for uh, secondary control resynchronization and power dispatch for virtual oscillator based uh, microgrid, and we use uh, reapps to implement the uh, we use reapps to implement the proposed control. In the last two papers, we talk about uh, microgrids with dynamic boundaries, uh, that's called uh, dynamic microgrids, and we use reaps to implement distributed secondary control strategy to achieve seamless transition during the reconfiguration of dynamic microgrids. So, we also create some demo videos for uh, our reaps applications. For example, this is the video demo for our uh, microgrid resynchronization application. And uh, this is our uh, 
this is our uh, demo video for dynamic grid, uh, dynamic microgrid application. You can find those demo videos um, on our YouTube channel, Reaps. So, currently we are integrating the hardware in the loop test bed at the uh, North Carolina State University with uh, Reaps platform. Uh, the test bed is called Green Energy Hub test bed, and the test bed has uh, three solid state transformers. Uh, battery energy storage systems, a smart house with uh, multiple house loads, and programmable nodes. And each SST and uh, battery energy storage system in the test bed has an uh, integrated REAPS plus microcontroller platform, which can be used to, to implement uh, control algorithms at multiple levels. And with this test bed, we can test the performance of REAPS and the applications uh, in a uh, uh, close to real in, uh, hardware environment. So uh, actually this is my last slide for uh, reaps. but before we proceed to the Q&A session, I just want to mention that we will host uh, our Freedom Annual Symposium in April in our beautiful Hunt Library at the NC State University. If you are interested, uh, you can uh, find our you can find our sympathy agenda and the link to, for registration on this web page. Uh, the registration is now open. So thank you very much for your attention and uh, we are now open for questions. Any questions? Um, yes. So uh, Relapse is uh the, the main job of reaps is to um, uh, to uh, what uh, to uh, integrate to a microcontroller or any control uh, equipment like that or because like I think like with open RT you can uh, send all the relay signals and everything right what, what is the main job of reaps in your project for example yes so reaps is a software platform so it's de it's decoupled from hardware right now we are using big of all single board computers as its hardware, but actually it's a piece of software. software. So the main job of uh, Reapps platform, in our case, is to do secondary control. So you know, uh, for microgrid secondary control, it needs a communication, it needs computation at the edge of the grid. So we actually implement the communication part and the computation part of secondary control in the, uh, uh, using uh, Reaps platform, so it does those two jobs. In our case, is there a um, limitation like uh, how fast the Reap can handle the time delay? Mm -hmm. uh, like a like a one millisecond, one microsecond. Yes. So uh, actually, this is th because uh, Reaps platform is a distributed uh, platform, control platform. So this delay issue is very important and we actually measured the delay in our test setup. And for the message between the reaps nodes, the delay is uh, in the range of uh, milliseconds, so it can uh, be tens of milliseconds in our case. But that's for like communication. Mm -hmm. And I just also mentioned that reaps has high precision time synchronization service. So we also have a delay for the synchronization. So the tolerance for uh, synchronization pulse we observe is uh, in microsecond range. So the synchronization is actually very accurate and the, the communication is a little bit slower. So basically then we are talking about like uh, the sampling time around like a 10 milliseconds and we can handle it very well. Uh, you can see so. But uh, the, the major issue we observe is that uh, uh, the, the computation time is actually very short. It's, it's like several milliseconds. But uh, when we use uh, our test app to communicate with the microcontroller using Modbus protocol, because Modbus protocol is, uh, is a very old protocol and uh, it's very slow compared to other components, so it takes a lot of time in our case. So the time step we used is 15 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds. But most of it, it's taken by Modbus message. So, how we do have some questions from our online viewers. Yes. Um, is there a plan to deploy reapps on other IoT devices? And they mentioned Raspberry Pi or NVIDIA Jetson. 
Uh, yes, that's actually the second part of the project. So um, this year, I think uh, 2020, we are going to uh, start to use ReApps for Raspberry Pi and maybe some other platforms. Yes. I have one question about uh, the communication. Say you have a distributed uh, smart grid application that requires some sort of peer-to-peer -peer communication. Yes. Some coordination among the IoT nodes. So say you have defined a, a communication topology. Mm -hmm. uh, it's not fully connected. How yes. does how does ReApps handle define like predefine this uh, cyber topology so that each node know who to talk to and who is neighbor is really you know logically connected in the cyber topology. React handle that. So uh, I think I, I so I think this question can be answered in two ways. The first is that in reality, of course, you want uh, uh, like a more connected graph, which may give you better performance of your distributed controller. So by default, Reaps assume that you have all-to-all -all communication, so each node can receive information from any other nodes. But uh, I know that in NAP, sometimes we want to verify the, 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 the per controller performance with a sparse communication network. This can be predefined in your application. So you can define which node can communicate with which node so that you can verify your control, uh, control performance with such a communication topology. So, so do they use, um, uh, what's the, Communication protocols. Uh, do they use CDMA or, or I mean, uh, <laughs> the like the internet type? Uh, yes, yes. So, huh? yeah. So the, the communication there is like uh, at the lowest level because a big or single board computer they have a Ethernet port. So we are using Ethernet at the lowest level and TCP/IP, and then on top of that we are using zero MQ as middleware. And then on top of that, mm -hmm. we define our own uh, communication structure using ReApps platforms. So, so is the packet collision an issue? Uh, I think this issue is, uh, the, yes, I would say yes, uh, package collision may be an issue and because we are using TCP IP in our case, and uh, this may increase the delay between those messages. Yes. Um, so you mentioned uh, ReApps is a platform for application development. Um, I guess you showed an example of operating in a uh, um, microgrid and ILT mode, if I'm not mistaken. Um, do you see any other kind of applications that you can develop with ReApps that would be useful like for possible future research endeavors? Uh, yes. So when we develop this platform, it aims at a distributed control, so basically any control, you, any distributed control, you can use this platform to implement. But because here at the Freedom System Center, we were focusing on the energy domain, so we just use it for the microgrid control. But yes, you can use it for other purposes. So if we compare the performance of the distributed system mm -hmm. with a centralized approach where a single operating system is handling the centralized node, so like what advantages does it have over the centralized approach? I think the most uh, prominent advantage of distributed control is uh, its capability of handling faults. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have one node that fails during your, uh, during your operation, then the control will still work because all the other nodes will coordinate together to compensate uh, uh, to compensate the loss of this node. But uh, if you have a centralized solution, then once the central controller fails, then you have to shut down your whole system. So does it have the option to relinquish control to the secondary node if a particular node fails? Uh, I'm sorry? Does it have the option to give control to a secondary node if a particular node fails? Uh, the, yes, that's one of the advanced features that uh, we actually in, in ReApps we have some, we have a, an important feature we, I, I didn't cover in this presentation which is called fault tolerant. So 
we can predefine what happen, what will happen if the system detects one of the node field. So you can write an algorithm saying that uh, if we detect uh, the node fields, then we can transfer all of those data or as mm -hmm. we, we can use other nodes to compensate the loss of this node. So now we have some more questions from uh, online. Yes. Um, and I think I know the answer to this one. Do we plan support for, uh, specifically they're asking about Tesla batteries with uh, IEEE 2030.5? Uh, I'm not sure. I think um, 20.5, that's the microgrid control, uh, microgrid control system standard. Right. And uh, we actually, we use, uh, we already used a uh, REAPS platform to implement all of those functions defined by IEEE 2030. For example, uh, the uh, resynchronization, the islanded operation, a grid connected operation, black star. But uh, uh, I don't know what do you mean by support the Tesla battery. I'm assuming um, they mean will we have an interface to mm -hmm. that particular piece of hardware. Yes, yes. If that's the case, uh, I think because the Tesla battery, I, I'm, I'm assuming, I'm not very familiar with uh, Tesla battery, but I'm assuming it will use some protocol like uh, Modbus, TCP IP Modbus, and we already have that features in our platform. So it can be very easily configured if uh, that's the case. And again, as open source, yeah. anyone could build an application specifically for that yes. part of it. So the next question, and Dr. Chow, this is related to what you asked. Um, could you define package collision? What exactly is that? I think that's that's related to the com like computer network. Okay. When you have multiple nodes sending information at the same time, and some nodes, because uh, this will collision on the network, this will create a connection on the network, so some nodes may back off for some time. So this will increase the delay between those uh, messages. Is that a good Yeah, yeah because I think they use CSMACD protocol. Yeah, exactly, yeah, thank you. Okay, yeah. Um, and so this is one which I, I think you may have already addressed, but they may have some clarification. How can several distributed generation devices communicate with each other to support um, a point of common coupling to provide the required amount of compensating reactive power. Mm -hmm. uh, this, 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 of course, can be uh, realized by a lot of ways, and the the, the easiest way, which is uh, give power, like reactive power command to all digits and uh, divide them equally. Then, that in in this case, you may need a central controller, or you can do it in a distributed way, which uh, will just like use consensus algorithm, you can make all of those uh, uh, digits to share this reactive power equally, but give command to a very specific uh, distributed generator to match the power exchange at the power, uh, cup, uh, power of coupling and the, uh, at the power reference. So I, I think you can do it in a lot of ways. and. Uh, uh, here, because we were focused on a distributed control, so you can use consensus algorithm, pinning based, specifically pinning based uh, consensus algorithm to realize this function. We, we have one more question from the um, web, and um, I think I'm going to ask this correctly. What, if you have devices that are not on the same Ethernet network, but are connected via the internet, is REAP still functional in that situation? Mm, in this case, uh, because right now we are like a, uh, we 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 developed this platform for uh, energy domain, mm -hmm. so energy security is very important for us. So we actually run all of this uh, communication or control in our private network. So I don't think uh, we support that at this moment. Okay. Yeah. So can this system be scaled for an energy trading application for a, a local set of houses or something like that? Uh, 
Yes. So in, if you check our YouTube channel, we actually have a demo called Transactive Vanish. So it, it's using blockchain technology to match the uh, trading. Okay. Well, very good. Let's thank Al again.